Welcome to Monday Night Live, the weekly training that guides professionals to financial prosperity. Join our community and let's start building your wealth. Recording now. All right, All right y'all. Happy. <laughs> okay, hang on. Everybody focus in on PF and pin him if you don't have him pinned. So that is awesome. And now we can do this and he can't see us at all. So thank you, Peter. No, that's right. I cannot see you. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. That's right. the look. It is the look. Well, let's dig in on this Eclipse Day 2024. Super cool day. What a great day to be teaching. You're going to be forever remembered as the day Benetta taught on the Eclipse, which is super cool. <laughs> I get the privilege and honor of introducing our guest speaker tonight, she was in the Peace Corps in West Africa while she was studying in college. She also, you might not know this, well, she's got a company called The Teacher Agent, and her motto is teach today by tomorrow. Learn today, learn today by tomorrow. And I am the host who butchers people's mottos. That is my name, and that is what I do. That is my special skill that I bring. She's <laughs> fluent in French. A uh, former school teacher has been in sales and real estate combined for 25 years, but this month is her ninth year focused in on real estate. So give a warm welcome and put your little proverbial hands together for Benetta, who's going to be teaching us today. And then a little point of order. I am put all your questions down in chat. And then at the end, we'll make sure we've got plenty of time to, um, to do those. But if you're like me and you don't have the brains God gave whatever God gives small amounts of brains to and can't remember stuff, just put your questions in chat and then we'll go through and, and do this. All right, Benetta, you're on, darling. Hi, everybody. Hey, Benetta. Hi. Hey. I don't know how many people are on tonight. <laughs> Quite a few, huh? 32. 32. Oh, wonderful. Okay. 32. All right. So before I get into my presentation, I'd like to make a short announcement about you know, my friends that came to visit with us a Zoom list a few weeks ago. So they have now expanded it to a few more markets they would like for me to share with you. So uh, they're recently in Southern California. Uh, they said about 450,000 homes searchable in a Zoom list uh, with the Zoom mortgages in that area. Um, that was last week. And this week they're in Phoenix, Arizona and the surrounding uh, areas, including Maricopa, Pima, and Pino Con Colony counties, excuse me, Pino uh, counties. Uh, with addition, uh, uh, they have now provide a uh, summable mortgage in 10 states. And the week, this week and the next week, they're gonna be in Chicago and the entire central Illinois market um, via M Red M MLS. They're going to be in Las Vegas, Denver, and Colorado Springs, Jacksonville, Florida. That's the Beach MLS. That includes West Palm Beach, Boca Raton, and Lauderdale and Miami. And beyond that, they're also working to add Texas, Georgia, and North Carolina. All right. So that's that announcement. So welcome everyone. Um, let me put back up my presentation here. Okay, how do I make this smaller? Okay, so before I uh, kind of get into my presentation, this is a presentation I do with all my buyers. It's usually at least an hour or sometimes a, a bit more depending on the questions that they help me, that they want to ask me. And the reason why I do this is, um, one, I used to do Zillow leads with the last team I was on, and Zillow lead was you take somebody out, you know, you kind of do something on the back of a, the back of your car, and then you sign them up. And I really didn't like that um, because to me, that really wasn't um, that really didn't teach them or give them any idea of what to expect. And although it worked, uh, they got to know, and you got to know them right away, and kind of figure out whether it was going to work or not work. This for me really worked much better. I used to do this when I was at KW, when I would meet people in, in the office. So is my voice okay? 
Does everybody hear me okay? We can definitely hear you for a little bit there. We got some feedback, but I'm not hearing it now. I got that too. So what I usually do is I open up and I, I start and I tell people a, a little bit about this is the first step to their to their um, future home ownership. I'm not going to read all this. I'm kind of going to let you all read it, but this is kind of how I start. I kind of introduce people to to um, to EXP to to myself, so they would kind of have an idea of what they're working with and who they're working with. So what we're going to do today is this is the overview. We're going to again, we're going to look at who is EXP, get to know who I am, benefits of home ownership. Are they ready to buy? Um, we go through the RWAs, uh, steps to home ownership. Why hire a realtor? Because I think that's very important. So these are things that I had been doing long before this thing came up with the NRA. Because I really want when I ask somebody to sign a um, an agreement with me or a buyer agreement with me, I really want them to know what they're getting for their hiring me. So how much uh, do you need to buy a home? What are the do's and don'ts during the process? Let's talk about expectations. This I think is very important, what they should expect and what I expect from them as my client. Advantages of a buyer broker relationship, my unique value proposition, and what are the next steps? So, excuse me, I kind of go into EXP and about Glenn and because some people may say, well, who is EXP and what is that? And I've never heard of it and all that. So I kind of give them some basics about Glenn, when the, you know, when this, the, the brokerage started in 2009 and, you know, something about him as a person and what was his dream. And I tell them that, you know, we both originally came from KW. He came from KW and he saw some things there and he kind of improved upon them. So I kind of want them to have an idea of who this company is. And so again, I go into, uh, you know, about Glenn, about the, and I think we're in 38 countries now. I might have to change this. Is that right? 17 countries? I'm not really sure. No, I'm thinking I'm getting the 38 states that we're in in this in this group mixed up with the countries, but I know we're in quite a few countries. And I think we're up to about 89, almost 90 agents now. And pe people ask me, well, what does EXP stand for? So I kind of tell them, this is what it stands for, exceptional experts, excellence, expectations, et cetera. I also kind of want them to know what our core values are as a company, because we are different and unique from other brokerages. And I tell them we are the only agent owned brokerage in the world, or certainly in this country. And what our values are, are service, sustainability, collaboration, transparency, integrity, innovation, agile, fun and community. And that is important. So they know what are our values. I think that's important. Then I'll give them a little bit of history about me. I'm originally from Chicago. I have a BS in education. I went to school in, in uh, Wisconsin. Again, as Gina mentioned, I'm a former Peace Corps volunteer. I was in the Peace Corps for three years, but I was in Africa for a total of six. Um, I taught in American schools, teaching English as a foreign language. And in I, I taught in African schools, teaching English as a foreign language. And American schools, teaching everything from um, uh, preschool to eighth grade. Uh, I was teaching English, reading, and art. I have a minor in art. And uh, I've taught everything from preschool to adults in West Africa, Hawaii, and the District of Columbia, and Virginia. So I kind of tell them again a little bit about who am I and what are you getting when you hire me? Who am I? What's my background? So that they have kind of have an idea of what my values are. My values really stem from, I think education is important. And so when I'm when I uh, teaching somebody about uh, real estate, it is important for me that they understand that this is the, uh, of course, we know that this may be the biggest um, biggest uh, th item that they may ever purchase, but I don't want to just, I don't want it to be a formality. I don't want it just to be transactional. I want them to understand the process and not just sign on the dotted line. I don't operate like that. Um, I kind of give them the benefits. What are the benefits of home ownership? Because, you know, we here in this country, a home ownership is the American dream, but why is that? What does that really mean? What does that mean to them? 
um, you know, what could it mean to them? Equity, roots, education. There was a study done that children that live in a home usually progress better than children that are, you know, live elsewhere. They might be uprooted a lot, but there's some stability about having a home that really lends towards higher education with children. I didn't do the study, but a study was done. Happiness, tax um, savings, appreciation, and of course the equity. I call this as passive, um, passive savings. All you have to do is pay that mortgage on time every month. And the, the um, of course we know that the, 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 the um, value of the home will increase every year. And then I go into, are you really ready to buy a home? And these are the things that, that you know, a mortgage lender would be looking for, steady income, you know, low to medium debt, you know, cash for down payment and closing costs. And one of the reasons why I talk about down payment and closing costs, because many people know about down payment, but what they don't know is about closing costs. And so I do have a slide in here, what are closing costs? And I kind of outline it. I don't go into a lot of detail, but I kind of outline this is the summary of what those are. Uh, two months of pay. I want, again, my intention is not just to sell them a house, but to to teach them the process and what people are looking for in advance. Before I send, um, I refer my client to uh, to one of my preferred lenders. I also give them some questions to ask the lender because they don't know what questions to ask the lender. They've never bought a house before or applied for a mortgage. So I want them to know what to expect. Again, I tell them there's no gotcha in real estate. Everything with me is going to be transparent. The steps to home ownership, I say there are about 10 of them. Hire a realtor. And I say hire a realtor first. Some people say hire a, a lender first. I say hire a realtor first because we realtors know vendors. We have a network of vendors and 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 you know service people and people that are really good at what they're doing. We have a lot of experience with them because they can end up with like one of my clients end up with a um, a broker that to this day I wouldn't trust him. I wouldn't trust him. Was, he was like a used car salesman, and I don't want that kind of reputation. So um, I say they should hire a realtor first and let the realtor recommend um, some of these other services that they might use. So hire a realtor, get pre-approved, you know, begin the home search, submit an offer for negotiation and get inspection, have, um, you know, have an appraisal. So all of these, I tell them about the 10. So we're gonna look and some people say eight, some people say more, I kind of summarize it at 10. Um, and this is kind of the route we're gonna take. Again, meet the, the, this is kind of the route. So I show them this, because again, I want them to know what to expect. I don't want to go from here to here and they don't know how they got there. That's not, that's not right. So I give them an overall overview. And then I tell them, you're going to see these steps, but you're going to see these steps one step at a time. Now, why hire a realtor? Many people think they can go on the MLS, they can go on Zillow, they can go on Realtor.com, they can go on Homes.com and see what's, you know, they can pull up, um, they can put up homes to look at because unfortunately our, our priority um, information had been given out to the public. So now everybody thinks they can be a realtor, they can think, everybody thinks they can do everybody's job, which is unfortunate. So if somebody wants to buy a house after they look at my presentation, good luck, because this is a complicated and a challenging and sometimes an emotional process. And so again, I want them to have an overview. And so they will have the idea of exactly what to expect. So why do you want to hire a realtor? Here you go, market knowledge, priority search, property search, negotiation. And then I tell you not just property searches that are on the MLS, I also have access to off-market properties. As you know, we have Real Scout, and then there's some other sites that I belong to. So I have information, I have um, access to that. Uh, negotiation skills, guidance, vendor, transaction management, the whole nine yards, here we go, professional. Another thing I wanna stress is that I tell people, just because you wanna buy new construction doesn't mean you don't need a realtor. 
because there's certain questions that when I take a client into a new construction um, site, I have an appointment, it takes the clients. There's a whole list of questions that I ask them. Like, um, does this does this price include land? Are these upgrades, um, you know, can we have a, you know, a separate inspection? There are certain questions that I want to know that they won't automatically let somebody know who would come in, you know, off the street to talk to this construction uh, representative. And, not, and then I tell them that person works for that service. They don't work for you. I work for you. And I make sure that they're going to get all the questions that they don't even know to ask um, in a, when I go to, when I accompany them to a new construction site property evaluation, representation, and support. So these are all the things, or some of the things. I also tell them that from the time you decide to buy a house to the time you close, there's 87 steps that are actually taking place. And most of those steps are done behind the scenes. They're only going to see, again, about this 10. So there's a lot of things that realtors do, paperwork, contracts, et cetera, that they will never see. And those things aren't done, you know, one, two, three. Sometimes a, a um, you know, a contract can take a couple of hours to do if it's done. Cause I always make sure my I's are dotted and my T's are crossed, because I don't want any, I don't want any con any headaches. So again, that's another reason why I go through this because buying a house is not like buying shoot at a store where you can take it back and return it when you know if you don't like it. So I want to make sure they're making a good decision and a good investment. I've taken an oath. I'm a member of NAR, and I take pride in that because I that's what I do. I want to make sure that, they're, they, that their best interest is served, and so I want them to know that. So this is another reason why I take them through this process. So again, getting to a lender, what is a lender going to be looking for? They need to fill out an application. Um, they need approval documents. This is what they're going to ask be asking for. And again, in addition to this that I share with them, I'm going to send them a list of questions of what to ask the lender. Home search. Um, not only do are we looking at the location, price, and these things, there is a, um, a, a client consultation form that I fill out when I'm talking to a client. And some of the questions I ask is like, you know, oh, uh, where are you going to be looking to buy? How soon? One to three months, three to six months, six to nine months, a year? How many people are going to be living with you? How many adults? How many children? And do in any of them um, have any special needs? And some of this, some of these questions that I have on this consultation for have come over time with me um, dealing with different people. I remember one client I had that um, she had a son that needed some special, needed to be in a, but she needed to be in a particular community because her son had special needs. And I didn't know that. She didn't share that with me until much later on. I was a little exasperated with her because again, my job is not just to sell somebody a house. I want to sell somebody a home and I want to make sure that that home fits their needs. Now it may not fit their forever needs, but it can fit their right now needs. And so the fact that she needed a home in a certain community to serve the needs of her special needs child really did sit too well with me because I was trying to assist her. So now I've made my mission to, if I'm working with a client, I want to know how many adults, how many children, what are their ages, and I don't care. It may not be appropriate to ask ages. I ask ages, and then I tell them. I'm asking because I'm trying to serve you, and the more I know about you, the better I can serve your needs. I have a client right now. She has her mother-in-law living with her. She has her mother living with her, and then her, her husband's mother, her mother-in-law, is going to live with them. So I suggested that they want to buy a house that may be on one level because her mother just had knee surgery. So she said, oh my God, Benetta, that's wonderful. You, the only person I've ever known to look out for us, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But again, I'm not just selling houses, I'm selling homes. And so I make sure that I know that if any of these people that are gonna live in this house have any special needs or need to be in a special community, that's important to me. That's understanding what my client's needs are. Now, 
Um, so the search tools, I go through that, you know, they can look at, uh, we we agents have real the MLS that I can help set them up on. We also have the ex, EXP exclusives that I can also invite them to. We have the um, the uh, app that I can invite them to. In addition to that, I also have um, uh, off market properties that I do. I have a what I call a perfect finder program. So. They tell me, they answer the 18 questions that I have on this questionnaire. I get to know what they're really looking for, where they want to live, you know, how much they want to spend, how many bedrooms they're in, how many people are going to live there. And then I'm going to narrow down my search to assist them as quickly as possible. And this um, program that I have, uh, Perfect Home Fighters, is really coming handy, especially now with the inventory being so low, I'm sending out specific letters to people only in the areas and in the price range that they're looking for. So it's been a challenge because people are still not responding quickly, but that's something that I, when I work with my clients, that I am um, committed to doing. Also tell them, you know, what are their options? They can do a home search on the website, Zillow, Real, uh, Real what is it? Realtor.com, homes.com, et cetera. And I also talk them about the Fizzbos. I said, if you see a sign outside, that's a for sale by owner. If you're interested in a house, please ensure that you give me that information, the address and the information, because when you sign an agreement with me, you sign an agreement with me with a certain commission in there, but I'm not trying to get you to pay the commission. But if you go in there, because we have an agreement in place, if you go in there and you talk to all and you all make a deal, you have we have a signed agreement. So... I don't want you to have to to pay the commission, and now I would have to say part of the commission. Um, but again, it's in their best interest that if they see that in their interest in the house, that they let me know so that I can make contact with the owner and get them to sign an agreement if they want to work with a realtor before we go to the house. So kind of what's going on now is kind of not new to me because I've been doing this all along. And so, uh, but this is just, some of the things that I highlight, and then the EXP app. Making an offer. I want to make sure that they know that when they make an offer, it's not a done deal. They can fall in love with the house. They can find it, you know, find the property. I find out the property details. Like I make an appointment when my client wants to go to a house um, and I schedule an appointment to see that house. If my client likes that house, I'm going to call that agent and build a report with them. I want them to know trust and like me, even the agent, because if they trust, know, and like me, that makes it better for my client. So I always call and ask some questions like, when was the roof done? Or do you have any offers? And I ask some questions like, hey, are the offers above asking? And sometimes they'll tell me and sometimes they don't. But I build enough rapport with them that it's friendly. And some of them, they'll even look at what's your name? Tell me again. So they'll be looking out for my offer. It's just part of my sales, um, what I do to get my clients. And that doesn't, you know, in this seller only market, it doesn't always work, but still it's what I do to build rapport with the agent. I would never just simply send over a contract without having spoken with the agent first, because I don't think that's the best way to service my client. And then I tell my client up front, your offer could be accepted, rejected, or they might counter. And if they do, we'll take those steps. And then what's the next step? What to be expected? Then an earnest money deposit will be expected and due within three days. And we're going to send it to the title company. And the title company is like Switzerland. They don't work for you. They don't work for them. They're just like a placeholder. They're, uh, um, they're Switzerland. They're in the middle. And then um, mortgage payment. Mortgage, confirm mortgage payment and has... Oh, another thing that I do is if my client is interested in a property, I will also send the listing to uh, the lender to confirm what the mortgage payment is going to be because I don't want my clients, again, I don't do gotcha in real estate. I do dress transparency. And I want my, my client to know what that mortgage payment is going to be so they'll be comfortable with the payment and not after the fact, but before the fact. So before we go any further, down the road, 
I mean, we want to submit an offer right away if they're interested. And if time permits, again, I'm going to send this listing off before I even do the offer because I want them to be comfortable with the mortgage payment and the um, the condo or HOA or the condo and HO fee, HOA fee in this area. So before, you know, they sign on the dotted line. And then um, I, I stress with them, if I send you something, EMD, you must adhere to these contracts, uh, excuse me, the, to these deadlines. Um, EMD is no joke. Um, I just recently fired a client. I think I mentioned that last week because he didn't know how to the, to the earnest money deposit. And it wasn't just that. I had been dealing with this guy for several years and that was the last straw for me when he didn't adhere to the contract and he was playing games. I'd had enough. I'd had a, absolutely enough. So deadlines are important. Um, if they have to have the uh, get the condo docs, HOA docs, there's a 72 hour deadline on them in this area. Don't come to me day four and say, well, Benetta, I, I don't want to uh, um, go forward with this. We don't play those games. Here's your deadline. You got 72 hours. And I'm going to say I'm direct. I don't, you know, I don't sugarcoat it. You sign an agreement, you sign a contract. This is legally binding. Please adhere to these deadlines because they are important because you're not going to make me look bad with the with the with the listing agent and this guy he had me it was not a good it wasn't good so i had enough anyway i i stress that the 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 deadlines and 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 um contract dates are very important and so as we go along one step at a time i make sure that they understand that they they are deadlines that is time sensitive. So that's important. And so they should adhere to that. And then I tell them about conveniences or what stays, uh, you know, what stays with the property. When the offer is accepted, again, the earnest money has to be deposited with the title company. And then the next step after that, because a lot of times I'm getting, I'm preparing them for what's the next step. I don't want them to guess. I want them to know. So the next step after the earnest money, but we're going to schedule um, inspection. I'm going to schedule the inspections, um, the HOA, I'm sorry, the um, the repair, the home inspection, and the radon inspection in this area, and the termite inspection. So I'm going to schedule it, and I'm going to attend. And if you can attend, great, so you can ask some questions. And again, I provide them with questions to what to ask the home inspector, because they don't know what to ask a home inspector. And so this gives them some empowerment. They, this is part of their, they're buying the home. I'm not buying the home, but this gives them, oh, I know what to ask. I know what to expect. So I want them to not only know what to ask, but to be empowered by what, because this is going to be their first home or whatever, their, their next home. Uh, purchase homeowner's insurance, I tell them that you will need to purchase homeowner's insurance and the lender is going to require it and title insurance. And I tell them there's two types of title insurance and why the second one is important. One, the homeowner, excuse me, the lenders are going to require and the title insurance. The second one is for their benefit and it's a one-time charge. And I go into detail, not here during this process, but when we get to that point, after we've gone through these other things, what are the next steps? Home warranties, I tell them about some home warranties. I give them a list and then I tell them to compare. I don't promote any particular one, but I tell them that it would cover some of the um, equipment, you know, the, the, the refrigerator and the furnace and the hot water heater and all of the things that could go kaput anytime. And so um, I give them a list and I tell them, you call them and you make the comparison but I do give them a list because if I don't, I remember one client I had early on, I didn't mention anything about home warranties. And then shortly after they bought the house, the refrigerator went out or they went, I, yeah, I think the refrigerator went out. Now it didn't appear to be old or anything like that, but you know, these are machines. So you don't never know when they're going out. So I make sure that I at least mention home warranties and what the advantages and disadvantages of them are or what the advantages could be. And then it's up to them to decide whether they want to buy. And then I give them some of the most popular ones. Finally, they're going to finalize their mortgage details and then we're going to do a final walkthrough. Um, I just give them a list and here are some of the companies that 
the home warranty companies that I would, you know, give them a list of. But again, it's on them to examine them further. I tell them they want to know. So if I pay this earnest money, what happens to my earnest money is suppose I don't like it. I tell them there's three different times you can print out point pull out the earnest money. Really, there's four, but I didn't have any room for the fourth, so I didn't steal them that. Home inspection, if something is majorly wrong, roof, furnace, something like that, we're looking for the big ticket items. We're not looking for, well, can they change the color on the wall or repaint the baseboard? The answer is no. We're looking for big ticket items. Um, so if they, you know, if there's a big ticket item that the person refuses to fix and they're not okay with going forward, they can get, they can um, decline, cancel the the um, the contract and get their money back. Appraisal. If the lender is, if, excuse me, if the seller is not negotiable, if the appraisal comes in and it's not, the appraisal comes in lower than what they offered and, and is not willing to negotiate, they have three options. The seller can say, okay, I'll lower it. They can say, okay, um, they want, might want to meet in the middle and they have to come out of pocket. Or if there's no meeting on the minds and they can walk away, they get their money back. Financing. If their financing falls through, um, they've done everything they were supposed to do and they can get their money back. And the fourth one is the um, condo or HOA. If they see something in there that they just can't live with, say, for example, they want to paint their house Easter egg purple and that's not allowed in the community, Within that three days, they let me know, no, I can't live with that. Okay, they can get their money back. But only under those circumstances. Now, how much money do they need? So I kind of go through. They need money for earnest money. They need money for down payment. I kind of go through these. They need money for closing costs. We're going to get into what those closing costs are. Uh, again, we're going to get into what those are. Home inspections. So um, appraisal, I break it down. And I tell them approximately 7%. And that covers about all of this, including home inspection, appraisal, all of this. So I give them a number. So if the house is 400,000, four times seven, about 28,000. Now, does all the 28,000 have to come out of their pocket? Not necessarily. In Virginia, we have a VHDA program for first time home buyers and they could qualify or not. I don't guarantee that. They could qualify if they do. Uh, the state of Virginia will give them two and a half, uh, two up to two and a half, depending on what kind of uh, uh, loan they have to offset some of the um, closing costs. So that could be a big, that could be a great thing for them. I tell them about home inspections. We have so many days to get this home inspection done. And don't come telling me day nine that, oh, I don't want to buy the house. I'm sorry, we're outside of the deadlines again we're outside of the contract definitions we have certain contract deadlines and so i again i want them to know what to expect now are they going to remember all of this stuff that i told them probably not but they cannot never say well i didn't know and then i'll get to the end i also send them um a home buyer uh brochure that i have um it's electronic so that they will have that I, I kind of, you know, I give this overview financing is about 14 days on the contract. And we're going to go over this on the contract. But again, there are no surprises. And then do's and don'ts. The do's I don't worry about so much, but the don'ts I go over quite loudly. I want them to read it to me. Do not buy a car or co-sign for anyone. I know this because I used to teach the VHDA program for first-time home buyers. And I taught it with a lender and I taught it with a home inspector and I taught it with a title person. And so I know from working with the uh, the, um, the lender that there were some things that people did during the process, during that 30-day window. And I tell them it's a 30-day window. Please don't do anything. So don't co-sign. Don't get married. Don't get divorced. I don't know why, but that's just part of what came up during, when I was working with the lender. Don't change professions in the middle of the stream. Don't start your own business. Don't go from commission to a salary. Don't go on commission. Oh, from a salary position. Don't buy anything with credit, appliances, furniture, et cetera. Don't shift money from one account to another. 
you know, that money's got to be seasoned. And I tell them that don't throw away any documents. I don't know how that came up, but it was one of those things that the lender said, some reason somebody had thrown away some documents. You know, I tell them everything that's on this list, somebody has done. There's no mistake here. There's no, oops, there's no, somebody has done it, which is why it, it appeared on this list. And um, don't get lazy and not pay their monthly bills the way they have been paying. And don't go on vacation without letting me know. I say unless. And that's unless I know in advance because, again, these, these, these things have time limits and deadlines. And so I want to make sure that I can work around those. So if I know in advance or I know they've already had it planned and all that, no problem. I'll make sure that that you know we have everything set up because I've never lost anybody any money, never. I pride myself on that. I, I've never, never you know done anything to cause my client to lose any money or not think that I would be trustworthy. So I, that's why it's very important to me that they understand all this. Now, closing costs. What are closing costs? Here's the breakdown of the closing costs. And I don't go into numbers. This is what this is what consists of closing costs. So I make sure that they understand that's what is covered in the closing costs. And next to these on a altar, they're going to be outlined. The numbers are going to be there. So they will know what makes that up. Then um, I tell them on the closing day. So we've gone through all of the steps. This is like step number. 10 here, I think this is step number 10, closing day. This is the big, big day. I'll be accompanying you to the closer, answer any questions and verifying the closing paperwork. I do, I go through the paperwork while they're going through, while the process is going through, I'm going through the numbers with them. I make sure they bring out identification. I make sure that they either bring a, a certified check or the money is sent in advance. And um, so that they'll know, again, no gotchas, all transparency, always knowing what to expect. Now, this is very important to me, expectations. And I'll tell you why this is very important to me. I want to know what their expectations are for me as a realtor. Have they ever worked with a realtor before? What was the experience like? What were or what, what did or did not happen according to their expectations? What does it take to win with them? What does it take to lose with them? And those are, that's what I want to know what their expectation and I want to tell them what my expectations are. And I think this is a very important because when I'm interviewing a client, just like they're interviewing me, I'm interviewing them. I've come to that point where, you know what, I don't want to work with everybody. Every, all money's not good money. And then, and you know, out here with the public, we've all had the experiences that we know everybody's not good to work with. So I have put this in my, uh, um, in my um, my uh, presentation here, so they know what they can expect from me and what they can expect from me as a realtor is all those things, all those reasons why they should hire me as a realtor. That's what they should expect from me. And what am I expecting from them is honesty and transparency. If I'm showing you a house and that doesn't meet your needs or something's missing, I need to know that. I need them to be as transparent with me as I'm going to be with them. I want clear communication. They're going to get clear communication with me. I'm straight, no chasing. I'm direct. Um, uh, clear communication, availability and cooperation. Like if we're going to see a house, we got it scheduled. That chase is changing the plans at the last minute. That doesn't work for me because I might have another showing or something. So availability and cooperation, this is good. Now, I know change sometimes... Um, things happen, but I'm talking about on an inconsistent basis. Like, you know, well, can we do it? No, I'm sorry. I got, I have another showing or I got an open house or I have. So uh, that's important. Respect for professional, my professional expertise. Some people think we're just, you know, key holders, open door openers. No, I'm a professional person, just like you would hire a, uh, a lawyer or a dentist or a doctor, and I should be treated with as much respect as you would the next person. So these are things that have come up over time that I stress with them. That's important to me so that we have a clear understanding 
of each other's expectations. Uh, preparedness and, doc and documentation. Um, when I send the documentation, I need them to send it back timely so that I can get it to the other side because they're waiting for it. Financial documentation, they need to make sure that the lender gets all of their uh, doc documentation in a timely manner. Again, fiduciary responsibility. I take my responsibility to to uh, to to work as their realtor seriously. They hired me. I respect that. I appreciate that. I honor that, and I take that. My oath was to make sure that they make a a sound investment, not just buy a house. A sound investment. I have I have said to people, I don't think that's a good investment. Now it's your decision. And I tell you why, and I give my whys, it's their decision. But again, I take the oath that I have pledged to help them make a sound investment seriously into heart. Uh, commitment and loyalty, they can expect that from me. I'd like their feedback, cooperation. I will, uh, again, expect timely responses and actions if I ask them, you know, there's a deadline on something. And I will ask them for a testimonial at the end and a referral. And um, the next thing is we will, in order for me, you to hire me and in order for me to do all these wonderful things for you and to explain to you, you know, what's the market like and what's going on in the market and this is the way to win. The only way I can do that is for us to have a buyer broker agreement. And what's what does that mean? Why is that important? You have dedicated represent representation. I'm your advocate in the home buying arena. I represent your best interests. Um, professional accountability on both parties. You know what to expect from me and I know what to expect from you because you signed a contract. You signed you know, a contract to buy a house. And um, it promotes the accountability on both sides. Personal service allows me to edit to focus on them and their needs, their interests, their preferences, and reflects my, com my commitment to them and clear communication. This, you know, I go through that, um, the contract, excuse me, the, the yes, the contract one time. And then after that, you know, there's no need to go through the contract every time they have to sign another one because nothing changes at the address and maybe the numbers, but it's important to go through that contract, I think the very first time, at least one time. And so I wanna make sure that they understand that. And what is my UVP, my unique, value proposition is some of this is very general, honest, trust, direct, market, knowledge, experience, you know, consultative approach, uh, advice, uh, negotiation skills, et cetera, et cetera. But what really sets me apart from other agents is that I will teach you how to win in this market. And I will go the extra mile to offer you access to homes that are not available on the open market. That's my unique UVP. And here are some testimonials. And if you Google my name, you can see them. Testimonials on Zillow. There's there's all kind of testimonials about um, people that I have have helped, um, to, you know, to buy a house or to sell a home. And then uh, I give them my, you know, remind them of my information. And then follow up, what's the next step? So the next step is that we're gonna go through the buyer broker agreement. After they ask them questions, they can ask questions. And they usually ask me questions during this. I don't usually wait for them at the end to ask questions. I just ask that today. But usually I ask them to ask me questions during the process because I don't want them to forget it. I don't wanna be able to answer the, the question right then and there. Um, but then I want to tell them or let them know what is the next step? What, you know, you've got this presentation, et cetera. What's the next step? The next step would be for us to, to review a buyer broker agreement um, for me to introduce them to a preferred lender. And usually I would probably do the reverse, introduce them to the buyer broker. I want to make sure that they, you know, they have buying power and then have them sign a buyer broker. They're just going to move. The, broker, the lender's going to refer them back to me offer questions again to ask the lender, set up listing alerts on the MLS, and actively assist them in finding their next home. 
And that is the extent of my presentation. Wow. You. Benetta, that's awesome. We have a ton of questions too. Are you ready? I'm absolutely ready. All right, let's go all the way up to the top and let's go. Okay, so to start off with, if, is this an electronic presentation, printed? Like, talk to me, talk to us about that. Are you doing it in person, Zoom, all those variables? So prior to the pandemic, I used to uh, schedule, when I worked at KW, I used to schedule in the office. Then sometimes you find people don't show up, which was, you know, a little annoying. Again, when I worked on the last team, when I worked with Zillow, I used to, you know, it wasn't, it was, you know, meet the person, meet them in person. And then kind of, I had a folder that I had some of these, um, uh, I have like, you know, an, an introduction letter and something about me and then something about FAQs, questions to ask, most often asked questions for folks from home buyers, seven things the first time home buyers need to do, something about the lender had a folder. Now, since COVID, I did I do them electronically. I do them via Zoom. I will schedule an appointment with them and I do them. I want to see face to face. We're going to do them face to face. And so they can see me and all of that. And then after that, um, again, I will refer them to a lender. And then when the lender say they're good to go, then we're going to go through the um um I can't talk through the agreement and sign it. Now, also at some point um, before COVID, when I would meet somebody in person, I do have it, I do have, I don't know if you can see this. Mm -hmm. This is an introduction to realty, but I do have a, I do have a presentation laminated uh, this is here this is my introduction to um this is my att attraction a agent attraction folder but i do have one of these for sellers and i do have one of these for buyers so i have it all laminated all of those slides that you see there i have them all and i go through them just like if we were on a zoom love it do they get a copy of it at any point or is that just for you to show? No, this is proprietary information. I don't give out my presentation. Sorry. All right. Cool beans. Um, on a side note, if anyone has a connection to the Chamber of Commerce in Indianapolis or someone connected to Indy 500, please let Craig Cannon know. Um, and then let's see, going down. Um, Rob wanted to know if you would share a copy of your presentation via email. So you can let us know if you'll do that or not. Um, and then Jay said comps, and I'm not real sure what that means. Jay, are you here where you can talk? Not seeing you there. I think you're one of the attendees, but if you can talk, what does comps mean? He sent me a direct message. Going, yep, going once, going twice. There you are, Jay. Is he talking about? I have no mm -hmm. idea. But well, talking yeah, about uh, it, was, um, it was just about uh, uh, during your presentation, you were saying like, why would they why go to a real estate agent? Yeah. So like the comparison, like you, you can offer the comparison. Oh, yes. That's the CMA. That's, yeah, comps, real estate. Yeah, yeah that's what I thought he meant. Um, you know, a CMA comps that, I would send them before I uh, submit an offer. I also do a CMA for my clients so they can see, you know, we can kind of dis determine where they want to put an offer in, how much, and if this is way overpriced, which I've seen some, and whether it's underpriced. So yes, I will usually do a CMA and send them to them before we decide on an offer that they would like to make. I Great. love that. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Mm -hmm, too. This presentation will also work for first-time investor buyer. And I said it could be tweaked for sellers too. Do yep. you? Yeah. Okay. Have you I used? I have one for sellers. I have one for investors. I have one for buyers. I have one for seniors. <laughs> uh, and I have mine for agent attraction. I do this for every different group that I'm going to work with because they have unique needs. Love it. 
Can you tell us more about the Perfect Home Finders program? I actually asked that one because I love the name of it. So outside of this uh, group, I have a, 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 a coach that I was kind of following um, and he talked about having a Perfect Home Finder program where, again, once I do the consultation and ask them all these questions and get a lot of direct answers about you know, um, where do you want to buy and and why? Then I want to know um, where do you where do you want to buy? I want to buy in Sterling. I'll just give out Sterling. Okay. Why do you want to buy in Sterling? Well, that's close to my job. Bingo. I need to know that because I, you know, you're working with people and they don't always tell you. If you don't ask the question, you're not going to get the answer. So mm -hmm. I want to know where do you want to live and why do you want to live there? Why is that important to you? Well, I want to live in Sterling because that's five minutes or 10 minutes away from my job is up the street. And right now I'm spending two hours going over the bridge to Maryland and my job is in Sterling. That's important. So I want to know where do you want to live? I'd like to live in Sterling. So, okay, so let me go on real flow and find out tax exempt or absentee owners or vacant houses or who is in Sterling? Let me send out some letters to them. Let me introduce that my client, Gina Hansen. Well, I won't give her that last name because I don't want somebody to buy. My client, Gina, is a real person. And she and her husband, what's your husband's name? Mike? What's Greg. Your name? Huh? Greg. Greg. Gina yeah. and Greg are looking for a house in Sterling because Greg's job is there. And so they really would like to be in that area. And they like this particular community because this is just the all the BF, the all the BF, the all, this is where they want to live. They just think this community is the bomb. That's what I'm trying to say. So if you're interested, I've sent this letter to you and everybody in this community, if you would consider possibly selling your home because right now, you know, it's a seller's market and there's low inventory and sellers are really making, you know, top dollar. My clients are willing to pay even a little bit over. They're willing to pay, um, you know, a little bit more or I forget how I worded it. I don't have the letter right in front of me. But anyway, that's what it attests to. My clients are, they're stable and ready to go. This is not a ploy to put your house on the market. This is not a ploy to get a listen. This is some real clients with some real names. And then I have a video that I attach to that. Uh, and so they can see me and I'm telling you about Greg and Gina and their dog and their grandchild that they, why they wanna live in this area. And so my real face is there. My real client's names is there. I send that off and then I follow up and call them and see if they're interested. Hi, I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you for participating in the Massive Passive Cashflow Podcast. I also wanted to let you know that the book, Global Investor Agent, is officially out in print and in Kindle on Amazon. You can get it by clicking on the link right here. Uh, if you are an agent, definitely grab yourself a copy. Th this book, guys, was not just written by me. I also included eight other investor agents from around uh, the country. And I didn't just handpick them. I literally opened it up to the, the entire audience and for, it was first come, first serve. So you're going to get feedback from brand new agents all the way up to top 25 team leaders. Some on my team, some are not on my team with valuable insight and instructions and guidance and actual checklist to follow to not just survive, but thrive in this market. I know you're looking for that advantage and this is it. Uh, by the way, if, if you are an investor, grab a copy for your agent. And, and for everybody, all proceeds, uh, sorry, all profits from the sale of the book, Kindle and print, all go to the Healing House Foundation, 100%. Thank you for doing that too, guys. Let's get back to the show. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Um, and suddenly I'm going to get a dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had someone ask, let me see, Brittany asked, do you have your own title company you use or is there a specific title company that you use that you like? And if so, why? So I use Vista or Vesta, as it's called, uh, with EXP. I used to use um, Home Force Title, which I had used for many years when I was at the other brokerage, and I even used it when I came over here because I was used to them. What mm -hmm. I like about them is they have home wheel travel. 
So I like to close homes the, the, the day of the walkthrough. So we walk through, we're already there. I have a, I have a folding uh, table and chairs that I bring along in case the house is empty. And then I have the title company or, you know, they have their processor to come right there to the home and sign wow. on the dotted line. So I use Vesta. Um, I don't think I've closed one with them lately, but they are, they, they've been really, really nice and accommodating. But the the one that I was using, it was have, I call them have home rule travel. Because I don't want to have to go. Like when I was at KW, the home could be in Woodbridge and the title company was over there. Well, I didn't mm -hmm. think it was fair to have the client to have to come way over there. The title company, when the title company could meet them at the house. Right. So I'm all about convenience for my client and not convenience for the title company. Gotcha. Very cool. I like having that you just have, I like having people in my team right. that when I did business, I had a reason that I used my title companies because they put my stuff to the top of the list. If there was a problem, my title company put it up. So if you don't have a team, right. um, yeah, but I like that you have, I like your reasons behind your team. It was strategic, strategic, yeah. deliberate. I like that. Right. Um, you know how you have your questions? This is actually for me also that um, the questions you need to ask an inspector, the questions you need to ask this, do you give somebody like a whole packet at once? Or is it like when you're going to talk to the inspector, here's the questions that you need to know, what form do you give them to, you know, QR code, email, what do you do? So I have an email that, um, let me see if I can pull this up. I have an email. Let's see if I can pull it up. I'm not sure if I can pull it up. I don't give them all the questions at once to answer your question. Because right. if, you, if you give them, I used to give them a package, but it still, they didn't have all the questions in there. I would give mm -hmm. them the questions. I send them questions in the email. Like you're going to talk to the real, to the lender. Let me send you these questions. And they would have, oh shoot. Let's see if I can. I don't know that if I can access it. Let's see basic. Let's see. Well, you're looking there. Lisa dropped in to me the um, buyer representation toolkit from EXP. So I went ahead and dropped that in so that you guys all have that also. So it's got some good information in there too. Let's see if I can. Can you see my screen? We see uh, new market launches. Launches. Let's see. Let me move this here. Um, questions to ask. You can see my screen. I can see an email from Michael Lorino. Oh, okay. Well, that's not what I want you to be seeing right now. <laughs> Hold on one second. If it makes you feel any better, I need much better glasses than this to read that. <laughs> I, I like having a list of assumable mortgages. That's great. Uh huh. So, can you see my screen now? QuickBooks. QuickBooks. Yeah. yeah, it's a it's, it's a an search it's a search screen of some sort. Google uh, or something. Okay. Let me, Bing, I don't know what that is. Okay, hang on one second. What questions to ask? Okay, and then while you're doing that, Rob drinks bourbon and so do I. Okay, I do have my next question ready. Only Rob drinks his straight. What? Not doing that. <laughs> okay, so can you you still can't see my. I see a search engine of some sort. It does not look like Google. Okay, well, I don't know why you can't see this screen. I'm still trying to figure out what search engine you got going here. I have a private search engine. It's called. Oh. It's called Avast, Avast, A V A S T, because it has a security on there where people can't. I keep the, I don't know what you call them, ugly people out, the the scammers, the yeah, yep. It cost me like seventy one dollars for the year, but there I don't. Is. One time I I was looking for some KW stationery and I ended up on a site that we can't even talk about. Okay. 
Okay. It was one of those sites. If and you I, do, and I can get it off. And I couldn't get it off my screen, and it was just so aggravating because every time I clicked on something, here we go with the lady and all her goodies. <laughs> and I was like, I didn't, I didn't. We're going to move on from movie. that. If you do find a list of questions, can you pop them? If you're, if you're willing to share, um, we can let, um, we can let Bev know to wait. So I have a whole list of questions. I, I don't know why you can't see this screen because I have in here. Stop sharing for a second and then reshare and then highlight the screen you want to share. Okay. Let me try that. And we'll see if that works or not. That works. Can you see my screen? I can see a bunch of, uh, looks like files right. uh, questions for lenders. Yes, we can. Questions for lenders, question for closing, questions about closing costs, questions about EDM, questions about home ownership, making an offer, radon, title company. So, so these are my questions. If I, am I working with a, so I would send them questions to ask, uh, questions for mortgage brokers, questions for lenders. So here's Meta, my that is super cool. That level of organization is awesome. I'm a teacher. I love it. So okay. I was I'm, them, I was, I'm sorry, somebody said something. It was it Anna. Amazing your level of organization. Well, thank you. There it is, it's Kendra. Isn't it? Okay. So um, would, let me just tell you what I would do. Yep. So I would send one, two, three, four. I would send in an email. Five questions to ask the lender. Um, no, I wouldn't send them that. Top questions. To, is this my folder? Oh, this is agent questions. I'm sorry. That's agent questions. Um, let me go back. So I have questions that I know that I need to ask the real estate agent about there. So here are the questions for the lender. Okay. These. So I was sending a couple of these. Um, a couple of these articles in an email. I would send them a couple of articles and say, okay, so anything untruthful. These, these are a couple of articles. I would send them a couple of these in an email. 14 questions to ask the lender. Again, they don't know what to ask the lender. And then I would also send them a comparison sheet and say, line up these, you know, just like we do a summary, like if you get multiple offers. Mm -hmm. So it's upside down. But anyway, there's a comparison sheet. I'd have them ask all the same questions and compare them. And then go with the ones that they felt the most comfortable with and who answered that question. Because what I don't like is that you go to a lender, you don't know what to ask. And some of these companies slide some fees in there. You don't even know what the fees are. Mm -hmm. So I want them to ask the question, you know, how long does this um, pre-approval last? Um, when are you gonna, what do you call it? I can't even think right now, close it down. How mm -hmm. to qualify for a the payment assistance? Do you have them? I want, I work with some lenders that make sure that they offer the VHDA program for my first time home buyers. What is the interest rate? You know, these are the reasons why you're asking these questions. So I don't want you to just answer the question. I don't send the article for me. These are articles that I got off the internet. Mm -hmm. These were important questions that I thought that my client should be should be asking because they don't know what to answer. What's the annual percentage rate? What does that mean, annual percentage rate? What does that mean? You know, they throw that at you like you you know you've done it every day. They have no idea. Are yeah. you on a hard credit check or a soft credit check? Do you charge on the interest rate? When is it? Oh, that's what I was looking for. Interest rate lock. When does it lock? How long does it stay locked? When can I lock it? Will I have a payment mortgage insurance? Do I not have to pay? Do I have to put 20% down? These are questions they would have no idea of what to ask. And mm -hmm. so to me, this is helping my client because now they know. I love it. Go ahead and stop sharing on that one. That's super cool. I'm going to echo in. I'm going to... I'm going to repeat basically what Benetta said, find some system you really like. I use Trello and I have all my stuff stacked up in Trello on cards, on boards. So that when I, for me, because I teach classes like Benetta teaches different, but still 
when I go to teach a class and they're like, um, you know, hey, yeah, we said yes. And then while they're actually typing me out, can we get a headshot and like a description or an intro or whatever? I've already grabbed my intro, slid it in there, grabbed the course description, slid it in there, grabbed the headshot, slid it in there. I've got flyer. And then um, I've got a couple of them that I've done sizzle videos for already. So I'm like, boom, 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 boom. And then they just have it. And right. it's like this, instead of me have, if you find yourself repeating anything in real estate over and over and over and over, then get a system where you don't have to repeat it anymore. It could be a video. It could be a Trello board. It could be an email. It could be a QR code that goes to a Google doc, whatever system you will work, grab that and make it a system so that you can do in three seconds, what's taking you 10 to do every single time you have to do it. So, so. let me share this with you. I've showed this to people before. One of the things that I do, those questions to ask when I'm introducing them to a lender, I would put those questions in a, in a pre, um, let me see. A draft, a drafted, a pre-drafted email. Yep. So cool. I use templates from, yes. from, um, Gmail, mm -hmm. an introduction to one of my lenders. So I say, dear so-and-so, and I give them the background, some of the background about the lender yada, 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 yada. And I put their information here and tell Darius, Darius, this is Gina and her husband, Greg. Did you say Greg? Yep, yep. And the and dog, don't forget the dog. They're first time home buyers and they want to be in this price range and they're looking in this and please reach out to them. They've been pre-approved prior or they have been pre-approved or he's VA and yada, yada, yada and follow with them. And so- I would send this to them. This this is already, I'm not typing this out every time I send this. This is already done. And then I would send, I would put, put Gina, you here, and Darius there, and y'all both get at the same time. Then what he doesn't know is I was like, you know, I told you I was going to send you these questions, right? Uh -huh. So he, I want you to ask him. I put those in a separate email and all I do is I pull up the attachment. I just put a, I can't even find an attachment here, but I just put a couple of those questions in an attachment here and questions to ask the lender. Boom, send it to you. And then you call up and Darius thinks, wow, Bananas people are on it. They know what they're doing. They know what, you know, it keeps, it keeps them on their toes. Yep. And it's two minutes instead of 20. I love that. I love it, love it, love it. Um, okay, what else do we have over here? We have, okay, we have a lot of people asking for slides, copies, whatever it is that you have. So whatever you can put together, you're willing to share, um, the, they're asking for it. Um, so, I so, so let me say this. What I did was I took the basics of the um, EXP marketing template. They have a buyer's template in there. Mm-hmm. I took the basics of that and I expounded upon it. I put some of the things in there that I thought was important, like the do's and don'ts, mm -hmm. the 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 uh, expectations. I put oh, I like some that. slides in there that so there's basically if you look in um, EXP marketing, there's a basic buyer presentation there. And then you can expound upon it. I can send mine out. That's not a big deal. I, could, I don't mind sending that out. Cool. But I also have a, um, like I said, I used to do, I used to have a folder when I met them in person and I would give them that. So now I send it out electricity because I know that was a lot of information that I gave them up and they might remember half of that. So I will send them this, it's a, it's a buyer consultation workbook, if you will, with some of those um you know, FAQs for buyers and stuff stuff in there. It's not going to be everything. It's not going to be my presentation. I don't send out my presentation to to clients. That's a, mm -mm. but I do have a buyer um, workbook, if you will, or buyer guide, if you will, for well, some of the very basic things like the 10 steps and, you know, so, like, why do you want to hire a realtor and some of those? So, yes. that, so that there is some stuff in there that they, but it's not 25 pages, but it's the highlights. Yep. Oh, I love that too. When I do my presentation on the CMA is dead one, I have a, I have the whole presentation and then I stripped out a ton of it and give the cliff notes out. And yeah. that's 
Well, they get, yeah, they get the cliff notes and yeah. it's the same thing. You get this. Um, it's, you don't get the whole dang thing. That's my thing. Mm-hmm. All right. So I've got a couple of hands here. Let's start over here with Anna. What you got? Hi, everyone. Benetta, you did an awesome job. Thank you so much for being so thorough and going through it. I'm so sorry I couldn't type my question because I'm driving and I will be for for a while. But I'd love to hear about how you carry out your perfect home finder, home finder, home buyer program, the one where you basically search for off market properties that you find through really flow. Mm-hmm. Uh, from what I recall, when you read out the email uh, template that you sent out, it seems like you're inviting the homeowner or potential seller to to contact your buyers directly. Is that mm-hmm. is that what you're doing in the emails? No, baby. That's a good question. Okay. Ask me. What I what I do is what I put in there. As I said, my I don't know if I can pull up the letter, but anyway, what I say in there basically is that Gina and Greg are looking for houses. Gina and Greg are real people, mm-hmm. and I put the names in there because I, you know, a lot of times we say, you know, I got a client. You call up these people, and you know, the first these balls. Oh and, yeah, I have a client. <laughs> we're lying. That's not a good start. So again, everything with me is transparent and on the up and up. So I put in there, Gina and Greg are first time home buyers and they're looking in this community because Greg works in Sterling. He wants to be in here. He loves this community. You have the amenities or whatever. I might even go into some detail about that. But he really wants to, to be able and, you know, they're raising their grandchild, you know, it's sort of like, a, I call it, I used to call them um, love letters, client love letters. No you know, we can't really send out client love letters anymore. You know, there's been some debate. I still used to yep. do that. I used to have my clients send a love letter, a company, and that would be the first cover. That would be the cover of the contract, okay? That would be <laughs> the, was the was the client love letter. So now I kind of worked the, a little bit of the love letter into this letter that I'm going to send out to these potential um, uh, sellers. And I've specifically chosen absentee um, homeowners because ain't nobody living there. Uh-huh. You know, this, nobody's living there. You know, um, my client might get it for a good price. There's less um, competition. There's no bidding war going on because nobody even knows it's it's not on the market, okay? We've got to do something to to offset this low inventory. And and just looking on the MLS, when you look on the MLS, you've already lost. You really come Uh lost. Especially when they do an open house. When they do an open house, they're looking for better, better offers. You can't win. You can't win most of the time in those kind of scenarios. So I got to think, well, how can I, um, you know, find some up? And guess what? If it doesn't result in my client being interested in that particular house, because I'm going to go and preview this house. I'm not taking the clients to go and preview the house. I'm going to go and preview the house. That's genius. That, yeah, now you, that's what I'm talking about. If it doesn't yeah. work my client, but my, my intention is, is honest. I do have a client. Uh-huh. I'm not lying about that. I really do have a client. That's where I put their names in there. And I really do put my face in the video and the short that they can, it's on a QR code where they can scan it and say, this is not a ploy. I really do have, and I tell them again, something a little bit about the client and I don't have all my script and spiel in front of me right now, but I tell them something about the client and this is legitimate. This is not a ploy to get a listing. However, if you're still interested and if that, you know, I want to preview, I tell them I want to preview the property to see that it's going to work for my client. And if it doesn't work for my client, would they be interested, you know, would they be interested in selling? And I want to do some homework before I go. That's what I do is to see in May or whatever. So I would know what the property is worth and give them approximate, you know, if it can turn into a little bit of a listing appointment. Yeah, why not? That's awesome. And um, a follow-up question to that, Hun, what percentage of your business comes from that approach, that off-market approach? Um, And do the sellers typically very easily 
agreed to paying the buyer's commission or your commission. Oh, okay. So one has been a challenge to, to you know, get some people to respond. Um, when I sent out the letters or do a follow-up, it's, it's been, it's, it's still a challenge because people don't want to talk to you on the phone. They don't want, they, you know, they ignore your letters, that sort of thing. But I still make the effort. So I can't say a particular percentage. I haven't been doing this program maybe a few months. So I haven't kind of say, well, 25% of my business is doing that. It's still a work in progress. I still send out the letters. I still follow up. So again, you know, people don't want to talk to you. They don't want to respond. They want to just ignore you. want you to go away. Um, but I have had a few and gone and look at and done some um, some um, previews to to, okay. to, to, um, to present to my clients. So you're getting the previews and then are they going in your database? Yes. Good. That's the point. Because you're right. They don't want to, they want to get rid of you until they don't. They don't want to talk to you nowadays. Until they don't, they until don't. they do. You know, you can mail them a letter until you blew in the flakes, until you blew in yep. the flakes. And so uh, I had to decide, you know, also um, there's some postcards that have been developed. Again, I didn't develop this. This was developed by this coach I was following. And um, now he's closed his doors on everybody, unfortunately. And so anyway, um, he had this excellent, he was, he's really, really good. And so he has these, that was one of the ideas I took, like, that's brilliant. And then you can follow up this letter by another letter. And there's a couple of different letters that you can follow to send out. So it's not just one and done. And so there's a couple of different letters you can follow up, but trying to get people to call you back or some of that. And I was thinking, yeah, you that's normal. Postcards, you want to send out letters. And I'm like, you can spend a whole lot of money on postcards and still not get any results. Let me try these letters. So I sent out the letters and then I try to follow up. Yep. It's, I mean, that's normal with mailings anyway. It's just yeah. a numbers game. Exactly. So let's go K. K, yeah, I don't see your face anymore, but I do have your hand still up. There you are. I, I, I was trying not to um, have my granddaughter's interruption impact the whole group. Aww. <laughs> she's uh, she's 12 and she wants what she wants when she wants it. Well, um, 12. Anyway, my question was along the lines of Anna's and with what Benetta said about the um, perfect home buyers uh, program. I was thinking that it was all of the questions she was asking them to find out what how to find the perfect home for them. So that was really my question: was is that what constitutes the perfect home buyer program? But now you've answered that. It's the off-market properties, I guess, in addition to your questioning about really, really probing deep to find out what they want. Absolutely. And everything, and I tell them in advance, I'm sorry, these questions are going to be followed up by the why. So um, when, when are you looking to move or buy or sell? Three months, six months, nine months? Okay, why is that important to you? I tell them in advance because people could be offended by a why question, but uh -huh. I, I'm trying to understand. So okay. how many bedrooms do you want? Why is that important to you? Can you can you use less? Can you can you do fewer? You know, you've already told me there's gonna be four adults, four mm -hmm. adults, three children, and you want four bedrooms. Could you do with three? Because if you just focus on four, they could be there could be another room. They could be really legally, there could be three bedrooms and a bonus room. Yeah. And so if you focus strictly on four, you may not get four in the MLS. Mm -hmm. So this I have is one, one other question. When you're working with buyers, I've had this come up a lot and, and I'm I'm trying to figure out other than just being real blunt and direct is, you know, they say they want this stuff and they give me this criteria. And mm -hmm. then I usually expand it a little wider just to make sure I don't miss anything. And right. then I find everything they like is very different than what they said they want. This mm -hmm. is why, this is why, we have to ask that next question, which is why is that important to you? We can't oh, that's ask that question yeah. because they're going to tell you, oh yeah, I need three bedrooms. I need four bedrooms. Okay. And you can go with that. But why? The, 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 the real nook, the real crux of that question is why do you need that? Yeah, I, I like that. that. That's been very helpful. 
I agree because it unearths motivation also, and that's the whole thing you need. You need motivation. motivation. There's motivation here. Uh, why? What is your motivation to buy, sell? Why is that important to you, and why at this time? Yeah, that's right. See, you're going too deep on that. That's nice. Yeah, sometimes you got to go two, three, four deep in order to get down what the real reason is. Let me tell you something. This has come out over time. You know, I never asked all these questions in the beginning. Oh know? my God, we didn't do anything like that in the beginning. It was like, you want to buy a house? Okay. <laughs> and one, one of the things I like about real estate is you, you're always learning. As a teacher, I have to always be learning or I have to go. Because I think if you're not learning, you're dying. So yeah. I have to always be learning. So all of these questions, none of this came out from day one. I'm still learning every day. Yep. The reason why I like this also is as the laws are changing and whatever's going to come down the turnpike is coming down the pipeline or whatever the hell you call that thing, you're already prepared to and prepped with something that if it has to morph a little bit, you can morph, you might have to morph it a little bit. Who knows? Nobody knows yet. But you're already prepared with something that clearly shows a lot of value. Yes. Clearly lays out a lot of value. And I think that's the important part as we're as we're moving into whatever July looks like, you know? So yeah, real this, stuff. This is what I do when I do my webinars. I'm trying to show value. I have people that have come to me that were in classes from with years ago. Obanetta, you taught a class at KW. I was there. Obanetta, you taught a VHDA class and I was there years ago. I wasn't ready to buy it then. I'm ready now. I have people and I'm like, really? <laughs> you know, I'm always surprised because they saw the value. They saw that. She really knows what she's talking about. Yep, and it's a pipeline you're building. We're and always this building a, a pipeline. And this is a complicated. Oh, I forgot that point on my in my thing when I was going through. There was one other slide in here that I tell them. You holding out on us? No, 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 no. I didn't hold out on the slide. There was one point. Let me see. One point that I forgot to stress, and that was this one here. Was it the next step? I was going to ask oh, you this oh, the expectations. Yeah. Ah. This process, in addition to all of these, your expectations, my expectations, this process can be complex. It can be emotional. It can be stressful. It can be challenging situations. However, they will always be handled professionally. I nice. say this because I had a client who's like, oh, this is so complicated. This is so so when they get to that point, when they're getting stressed out and they were so remember, I told you during the presentation that this process could be complex, that this, comp, this, this process can be emotional and stressful. I don't want you to stress out. That's what I'm here for. That's why you hired me. You. Yep. So it's my this is. Uh, one of the things that I put that and I highlighted that I forgot to go over that when I pulled up that, but this is important. This is as important as knowing what their expectations are. And the reason why I came to my expectations is because some of the clients have not, are not meeting, have not met my expectations. So, so again, this is an interview for them. I'm interviewing them and they're interviewing me. This is a two-way street. Because yep. if they don't meet my expectations going forward, like the client that I just fired because he got on my last nerve and I'd had enough of him after two years. If you don't do what I ask you to do from the very beginning, you need to find, and I don't think I'm the right agent for you. Yep. Who here has fired a client? Yep. A How flipping good does it feel after you fire that client? Wonderful. It's amazingly good when you finally have had it, when you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. Exactly. And you know what the thing of it is, whenever and how many here have been in a cross deal where the agent, where the client on the other side of the deal was a nightmare, an absolute nightmare, right? You know whose fault that is? It's the agent's fault. Right. When our client is a nightmare, it's our fault. Absolutely. And the reason why I know that is because. If we fired our nightmare, if if we try and try and try and try, if finally we're like, you're done. And if everybody did that, the nightmare client maybe would stop being a dang nightmare. Well, so, one, of the, one of the advantages I also see of this, when they'll have to um, um, be responsible for paying our um, commission, 
Mm. They're not going to be playing around with it. They're going to want you to be professional and they're going to be professional. It's, you know, it's, they don't have any skin in the game with us. That's one of the problems. That's, like that's a great. They don't, they don't treat us professionally because they just think we're golden door openers. I'm not a door opener. I'm a professional and I want to be expect, re, re, respected and treated as such. So if you have to pay, you want to hire me. So my new thing is not, uh, can I just be your agent? I, I put in now in my, um, I just sent out some, I had an open house, I have a listing. I've sent out an open house. Uh, I put out some, sent out some emails to some clients that didn't have um, uh, realtors. And I said, I said in there, thank you. I hope you've, this finds you well, this, uh, you know, this text or email finds you well. And I understood from our conversation at the open house that you did not have a realtor. I would like to apply for the job. I wouldn't just want to be, I like to apply for the job because I want them to understand is I'm applying for the job. I'm, you're going to hire me. I'm not just going to be your agent. Right, right. That's, I love it's, that approach. That, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, words are important. Kate, did you have another question, honey? I saw your hand still up. No, that was, if she clarified it. All right, let's, let's get that down then. I love this. This is such a great conversation. Does anybody else have any other questions? Going once, going twice. Well, um, sit tight one second, because I have a favor to okay. ask all of y'all. Benetta, this has been wonderful. Like absolutely wonderful. And what are we looking? Is that your inspiration? The yeah, I just want to show you one. I just want to show you one other thing. Yeah. I want to show you that. Can you all see my screen? Okay. Uh, highlighted yellow stuff. Yeah. I'm trying yep. to get rid of, let me stop sharing for a minute and then reshare just this. Um, oh, shoot. Well, she's looking for that to get that up. Here's my question. I have a favor to ask all of you. You guys, can you help me out? Super easy. Thank you. I am starting a new email campaign and we have to email out a bunch of stuff. I don't want my bounce rate to be high. What I would like to do is email you guys too. And then if you guys don't want the emails and it's totally okay, I don't care. Just let me know and then I'll remove you. But that first email that goes out, I want to make sure my bounce rate stays low. And it's been a little while since I've emailed some people. So if you guys are cool with it, I'm going to throw you into an email marketing campaign and then just let me know, like throw me a text or something in there and just let me know. And then I'll just pull you right back out again. And that way my bounce rate for that first one, it should mitigate it. It should really mitigate it. So thank you so much for that. I massively appreciate it. And you don't have to deal with my marketing stuff. You can just like text me and go, Gina. Okay. And you won't hurt my feelings. Actually be helping me hugely. So thank you. All right. Love okay, you. so this is the, this again. I showed you. I had questions in there. What to ask the lender? I have mm -hmm. questions in there. Um, buyers, what questions buyers should ask? Period. What? Um, what? What is this? Um, the questions sellers should be asking. Yes, I have all kind of what questions in here, and within that, um, yes, I have questions for me, the agent. What questions I should be asking the listing agent? When I have a listing uh, about their buyers, I have, you know, I have questions and then just not for my clients, but questions for, you know, here we go. Questions they ask Linda, questions they ask for closing costs. I Maybe I did go over this. I'm sorry. Maybe I yeah, did. Yeah, you go did go over some of them. You okay. guys. But I do have in here questions for me, the agent, to ask the lender's broker, the lender's buyer, the lender's uh, buyer's lender. The lend my lender partners, hard money. So I don't just have questions in there for my clients. I also have questions in there for me to make sure that I don't forget to ask important questions when I'm on the other, on the opposite side. I love this. So I had a doc that I did that was the 10 questions every seller has to ask before they hire an agent and the 10 questions every buyer needs to ask before yeah. they hire an agent. And I used to uh, print in the newspaper. So I had a, a Sunday broker column thing. Anyway, so that went out and every so often, every, I don't know, year or whatever, I would get them to reprint it. And then the buyer one went out also. And then in addition, just other stuff. Anyway, 
Y'all think about this and get it out there and post like crazy. And when you have your 10 questions, every listing or every uh, seller should ask their listing agent and buyer should ask their agent, make sure that they're, they're uh, make sure you're the perfect answer. So if you have a team, you should be like, do you have a team and why it's so important to have a team? If you don't in your single agent, why you never want to go with the team? So, so have the questions be geared towards who you are and how you do business. Because I can tell you how interesting it is when you're on a listing appointment and you suddenly realize that they have your magazine article or your newspaper article. Nobody does newspapers anymore. That's how old I am. And they're on question four of your 10 questions. And you just kind of sit back and you're like, yep, those are my 10 questions. Here we go. So if you haven't got this built, I highly encourage you to build it and then use whatever uh, methods of communication you have out there to get that kind of thing out there geared towards you because it's really interesting. They don't realize that you're actually the one that did that when you're on those interviews. So just a tidbit on that. And it's just leveraging your stuff to figure out how you leverage your stuff over and over and over again. So love that, Benetta. Love your questions that you have. Mostly really love your organization. That is very impressive. <laughs> really impressive. Great stuff. Now, if they want to go and buy a house after they see my presentation, good luck to you. <laughs> They're lost, honey. <laughs> yeah, because uh, they don't know what to ask. They don't know what to do. They don't know what's the deadline, what's the contract date, what is, okay, no problem. Good luck to you. Yep, yep. Awesome. All right. All right. Everybody, can we do like some applause claps or emoji claps or this kind of thing or something? Benetta? Wow. That was so good. It was so, so good. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. Really, thank you. You're very welcome. And I'd be happy to share my presentation with y'all, but I got one stipulation. Please don't share with your clients. Don't, you know, use mine as a template, do your own, tweak it the way you want, but don't see my presentation now. That's my only request because I don't, that's my that is such, I, I will put out there the promise that we will honor that. And um, Tom, can you, when you're put, do we, are you going to send anything to Bev on this? Can you let Bev know to put, you're not going to? Okay. Benetta, when you, oh, Tom's not in yes, no. What's Tom doing over here? Tom's not in yes, he will. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Can you, thank you so much to put out there that we don't share it. Um, and I want to be able to honor that because I completely understand I don't, my stuff is my stuff and I want to use it. I'm cool with sharing with you all, but I want to use it to like, I want to make more money off of it. I mean, I really, really do. So I completely get that. Benetta, thank you. One and more. Then, and then you. the one last thing is, you know, after you do your presentation, follow it up with a, a buyer guide or a seller guide so that you've got some highlights in there. You know, you're not sending your presentation but you are sending them something because that's a lot of information and they're not going to remember all that. And you don't want them to remember all of that. You just want them to, to say, whoa, I can't do this on my own. I really do need you. I really do need, and you really do know what you're talking about. Yep. So yep. follow it up when you, after your presentation, thank them for the opportunity and follow it up with some kind of, I do have a buyer's guide that's in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. that I do send to them that, again, it just has a few pages of higher, it does not have 25 pages of a, of a slide in there. Right, right. No, and they're not going to look at 25 pages of it anyway. And even if they could, they're not going to understand it. So mm -hmm. it's better to get the short little version of it too. Yeah, so very cool. Wow. Thank you, everybody. Um, last words would be the, oh, what would I say for last words? Um. I'm going to say this, whenever you find yourself, like I said earlier, doing something that you're repeatedly doing, it's time to set up a tiny system for it. Use whatever you're going to use, whatever works for you, whether it's video, YouTube channel, QR code, Google Docs, uh, Trello board, Notions board, doesn't email templates, doesn't matter what it is. It, it's the one that you will use and just start thinking about it. Oh, hang on. I've just said the same exact thing three times. Time to get it into some sort of template thing so that you can start to really systemize your business. That, what Benetta did, that did not happen in one day. And mm -hmm. she did not stop real estate for a year to build all that. 
That's mm-hmm. not how it works. Get out in there, get your feet wet. Don't just get your feet wet, flip and dive in. So your hair's wet and everything. And as it comes up, your the way you do business is going to be the way you do business. It's not the way everybody else does business. It's how you do business. But the same, I can guarantee you this, the same things are going to pop up over and over again that are specific to you and how you are presenting and the questions your clients are asking because of that interplay. So when you have those, build the systems around it. My systems didn't come up over at night. My systems came up over doing it hundreds of times. Benetta's as well. Yours will too. If you're brand new, don't stop to build them. Build them as you're going. As so, a matter of fact, you can't build, you can't stop to do it because uh-uh. how you build it is out of the experiences you have with the people. Exactly. Yep. You won't know what to build. And, and just because those so- expectations came out of experiences I had with like, you know, I need to put this in there. What are my expectations? Because this one didn't meet my expectations. So now I need to put in there about my expectations. Because I remember long ago, I saw something like that. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's not important. It wasn't important at the time. But let me tell you, it's important now. Because I've had one of those experiences where I need to say, though you have expectations, I have expectations too. Yep. And all professionals do. Doctors, attorneys, dentists, exactly. they all have expectations. And yeah. we are on the same playing field that they are. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. Yep. yep. So thank it's my you. my absolute team. pleasure, team, to share this with you. I hope that uh, you found some nugget in there that you can use to help develop your own. And if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them going forward. I'm always here for for you all, you know, as a, as a team player. Um, we have the best team. We really do. We have a great team. Thank yep. you, Benetta. Really good. Thank you. Thank you so much, Benetta. All right, Bye. y'all. Thank you for watching this episode of Monday Night Live. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and go to realestatewithgarywilson.com to join our community and start building wealth today.